everyone. This is my walkthrough, the calorimetry lab from our module for week two. So in your document, you've got a link to a YouTube video, which is where you need to get your data from for your lab. But I've gone ahead and I filmed quickly one of those gizmos that we were using earlier in the school year. If you go to explorelearning.com, you'll see that I've actually unlocked it for you if you want to play with it as well. So I'm going to take my own data and I'm gonna work through one of those questions with the data that I'm collecting here. Now, one more thing that I've added here that's not on your paper is they ask you for the final increase of the temperature of the water. They kind of forgot to ask you to record the final temperature of the metal in the water at the end of the experiment. So I've gone ahead and added that little table here at the bottom. And I'm actually gonna go a little bit further in this video than your lab does, but I'll get to that later. So here to start, I'm using a 200 gram block of copper at 100 degrees Celsius. So, where is it? Mass of each metal in grams. My metal one is 200 grams. And the starting temperature of my metal here is going to be 100 degrees Celsius, 327 degrees Kelvin. Then it also asks me for the starting temperature of my water. So my water, I've set it to start at 20 degrees Celsius. And the amount of water in each cup, milliliters. Well, ooh, here it tells me 200 grams. Well, here's a very handy conversion. One gram of H2O is equal to one milliliter of H2O. So if I have 200 grams, I have 200 milliliters. All right. Now, the one thing I dislike is that the simulation goes very fast. This actually should take like three minutes in real life. So once my hot piece of copper was placed into the water, its temperature quickly went down and the temperature of the water very slightly went up. So until they got to that same temperature, that equilibrium they're talking about. So the final temperature of both would be 26.62 degrees Celsius. So now the final temperature change is going to be final minus initial. So I start with 26.62 degrees Celsius minus, now I'm rather upset with the Gizmo website because their initial temperature is only one sig fig. So really I can only answer this to the tens place in which case there's not much of a change. So I'm gonna fib a little and say that our starting temperature was exactly 20 degrees Celsius to two decimal places. So maybe it was actually 19.99, maybe it was actually 20.01, sig figs. So my change in temperature would be 26 minus 62 minus 20. 26.62. 2 minus 20.00 gives me a change in temperature. So my water changed a positive 6.62 degrees Celsius. So I've collected all my data. I'm going to quickly take a picture of this to move it to the next page. Here's my table. So now I need to calculate and find for my value of Q for my water. We're trying to find out how much energy went into my cup of water. So here's my data table. So my Q, my energy that went into the water is my unknown, it's my X, it's what I'm looking for. Then 
my mass, mass of water, one milliliter equals one gram, so I have 20, 200, sorry, I have 200 milliliters of water in my cup, so my mass of water is 200 grams. My specific heat capacity of water is given right here. It is 4.18 joules per gram per degree Celsius. And then my change in temperature, my final temperature was 26.62, so my change in temperature was a positive 6.62 degrees Celsius because my temperature increased. So now in order to solve for Q, I just need to plug my values in. So I've got my X is equal to, this is just like the molarity problems that we had last quarter while we were all at school together. You take your numbers, you plug it into the equation. You get X by itself. So sometimes you need to reorganize a little bit. Cancel out combined units to see what you're left with. So now I want to solve for X and X is already by itself. Let me look at my units real quick. Well, I've got grams and I've got divided by grams. So those are going to cancel out. So grams cancels out grams. I have joules and no other joules, so joules stays as it is. And I have degrees Celsius divided by degrees Celsius, so those cancel out. So all that's left is to multiply these three numbers, and my leftover unit is joules. So come on up, calculator. Clear all. So I have 200 times 4. 0.18 times 6.62. So my amount of energy my value for Q, my unknown X is equal to 5,534.32 and Joules. So this is my answer for the data that I used. Now your data is going to be oops, different. I believe he only used 50 milliliters of water to begin with. And the temperature change is going to be a lot more dramatic because he used a lot less water. So you're probably going to have a different final number, amount of energy going into your water. This is all you have to do. You're just doing this three times for the data you collected for that lab. In years past, we used to go a step further. I would give you guys a block of metal. I'd heat it up. You'd put it into a styrofoam cup. Stir, stir, stir. Let that temperature increase. Take your own data. Then you'd have to solve. You'd solve for the energy that went into the water from your hot piece of metal. But then, because you guys are honors, I would have you take it one step further. I would have you take your value for Q, finding how much energy left the water, sorry, went into the water and left the metal, and then I'd have you plug it in to see what your specific energy was of your metal so you could figure out what type of metal we were working with. So we are now going beyond what's in the module. I'm going to go ahead and take a picture because I need to know what the Q was. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to solve for the Q, sorry, the CP of my water. So I'm taking this clipboard. I'm pasting that value here. And let me take that image, copy it, because I need my data again, and I'm going to paste it here. So I'm no longer looking for my Q, 
my Q is equal to the negative Q of my water. So, so much energy went into the water. That's a positive value. And I got a lot of questions about this. So my metal gets a negative Q. It lost energy. My M is not the mass of my water. And I don't need any of that statement. Now M is my mass of metal. My CP, I'm no longer looking at water. This is my new unknown. That's what I'm looking for. And my delta T is still the change in temperature. Although this is not going to be a positive number anymore because now I started at 100 degrees Celsius, my block of metal, and I cooled down to 26 degrees. So let's have some fun and do some real math, really plug this in. So the Q for my metal would be negative 5,534.32 joules. The mass of my metal is right here, number five, 200 grams. My specific heat capacity of my metal is what I'm solving for. It's what I'm trying to figure out. And then my delta T, oh, I need to solve this. So the change in temperature, my final temperature of my metal was 26.62 degrees Celsius minus my initial temperature of the metal, which was 100 degrees Celsius. And again, I'm going to pretend like there were two decimals there because whoever made that gizmo did not think about sig figs, which upsets me. I think I'm going to write them a strongly lettered word, strongly worded letter. 26.62 minus 100 means my change in temperature for my metal was negative 73.38 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to put away the calculator now. And I'm also going to put a little thing right here. This X is my X for water. So now I can plug this in, go back to my purple pen. My delta T is negative 73.38 degrees Celsius. So my Q is equal to, let me plug this into the equation, negative 5,534.32 joules. Hmm. I'm not going to have enough room to write all that in there, will I? Negative 5,534.32 joules is equal to my mass, which is 200 grams, putting that in parentheses, times my unknown times negative 700, sorry, negative 73.38 degrees Celsius. So I want to solve for my X. I want to solve for my unknown. Now, this is where it gets more complicated. I need to get X by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 200 grams times negative 73.38 degrees Celsius. That cancels, 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 cancels. And over here, I'm going to divide it by 200 grams and negative 73.38 degrees Celsius. So when I put this into my calculator, there's a lot of different ways you can put it in. I'm going to show you the most the least likely way you are to write it in wrong. I have negative 5534.32. Five, 
then I'm going to divide it by 200 grams. Now I'm going to divide it again by 73.38. Hit that negative button. So I divide by 1, enter, divide by the next one, enter. So my x is equal to 0 0.3. 3771 joules divided by grams degrees Celsius, according to this data. So now what's neat is I know it was copper. I actually know what kind of metal it was. If I look it up here, the accepted value for specific heat of copper is 0.386. So hey, that's actually really close. Okay. Well, I hope you guys enjoy that. I'm going to go ahead and make another video now that works with those practice problems in your capture sheet. Stay safe. Wash your hands.